Okay, this is a very quick uh, tutorial on using the uh, SPEC 20D. It's a pretty, pretty simple spec. Uh, the cuvette holder is here. Uh, the light beam actually is coming across this way to the uh, photo detector, which is on this side here. Uh, this particular attachment that's here is a um, cuvette holder. So the cuvette goes in. Um, it has a slot on this side, so the front of this should go in, in this direction, if you can see that slot. Okay. Um, and it'll work actually in either this direction or in the other one to a certain extent. However, if the light passes through the slot, uh, you'll get a little less dispersion, so that's definitely the way that it should be, should be used. Um, I just had the spec on, so there's the, the actual operation is, is listed right here on the instructions on the, uh, the unit itself. Um, but a little few things that are uh, to know about it. It says number one to turn it on and it has the, the numbers to correspond to each of the buttons. Um, and the, so when you turn it on, um, you actually do the uh, calibration and the spanning in the transmittance mode. And so from that standpoint, uh, it's already been warmed up and so normally you would wait, it says wait 15 minutes, but I've found honestly uh, anywhere between you know, five, even eight minutes, depends on a quick measure that you're going to be doing. If you're going to be doing a whole sequence, it may drift slightly. Um, the wavelength is, is actually set um, with this knob, but in the order that they have you do it. Uh, first is they just simply want you to zero it. So what you're doing here is you're actually, uh, if you take a look, at the, uh, the knobs that we have here. Um, uh, this is knob one number uh, one and also used in, in step two. So it turns on this way. And then if you go ahead and you turn this on up, you'll notice that the transmittance is becoming less and less negative until you actually get to the point where that will become zero. Now, if you think about it, transmittance being zero means that it's receiving uh, essentially no net uh, light at the photodiode. Um, now when I put this in, it actually opens a window and I put a little label on here to make this easier to see. It actually says front. Um, and by when you put this in, uh, now I notice the set screw isn't in here right now, so it's a little loose, so I just am consistently going to be holding it in one position. It won't make that much difference for absorbance, it's not that. But when you put that in there, you can see that the transmittance now um, is going to go up uh, a lot higher. The number there, if you take a look at it, there is around 31. And we want now the transmittance to be fully spanned. So if you look at the things here, this is step number three. It's pointing to the number three button. And so you can actually now turn this and span that out to um, full scale. And in transmittance mode, full scale will be 100% transmittance. So, oh, looks like we're not going to quite get to 100%. Uh, that probably means in this particular case that the, uh, there's not enough uh, the output on the bulb actually isn't high enough. I had noticed this, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, this is something you would obviously not have to do uh, under under normal circumstances, but I may as well catch that in the, uh, the video now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the unit off. Let's just turn this until it goes off. Um, it turns out the uh, electrical outlets on the back side and so I'm going to go ahead and unplug it from here because I'm actually going to go inside the guts of this unit and uh, replace, replace the bulb. And that's done pretty simply. Um, Spin it up on end. It's pretty stable to get the cord out here. Now it's unplugged so you can undo the uh, little drawer here. Inside here is the bulb that we're going to replace. Uh, this is the photodiode. The light path, when this is in the position, goes inside here through a mirror, through that, 
and then when this is closed, in this particular combination, this happens to be the wide uh, spectrum photodiode, it has a red filter in there that actually then allows this to operate from around 340 to uh, 950 uh, wavelengths, nanometers. Um, to actually take the bulb out, um, it's going to be warm, uh, but the reality is you don't even have to touch it. Uh, it's spring-loaded, so you push on that spring load and uh, rotate it, and the, uh, the bulb will, will come out just like that. Uh, we happen to have a bunch of these because when we ordered them years ago, we thought we were ordering one, and in fact, we were ordering one case. Um, I have gloves on here, which is a good deal because you don't want to get crud on there. Um, installing the bulb, it turns out it can only go in one position, and so it will be making contacts on the inside there. Um, and so if you look at the back side of this, there are two beads straight up and down, rotated a little bit, and then that goes on there, and be able to just simply rotate it in place. So now the output on that shoot will be way higher than it was on the previous one. And I'm going to go ahead and take the unit. These things are kind of built like a tank, which is a good thing. Um, I'm going to pause for just a second while I go plug it back in.